Hi there, Steve here. Today I want to share with you my experience on Duolingo. Uh, I had uh, some difficulties and perhaps some of you who are more experienced with uh, Duolingo can help me out. Uh, once again, if you enjoy these um, videos, please subscribe. Uh, I apologize for the sound on the last uh, video. I experimented with a new microphone. Uh, it didn't work out uh, because uh, prior to that I had been using a lapel mic and there were complaints that it was a bit clipped. So today I'm just using the microphone, the built-in microphone in the iPhone itself. We'll see if that works out better. Now, Duolingo. My experience with Duolingo. Um, I decided to use it for Greek because that's the language that I started studying a couple of weeks ago. And so here is what I found and, and I'd be interested in, in I jotted down some notes. First of all, going into Duolingo, I found that I sort of had to choose between being a beginner or testing myself to see what my level was. So, since I'm essentially a beginner, I went to beginner and I found that the beginner um, lessons or whatever is just too boring, too slow. They test you on the names of letters uh, and on a few very simple words. So I said, to, you know, I'm going to be there forever. I'm already well past that because I've been doing uh, Who Is She? One of our, that's a 26 chapter lesson at Link. I've started doing a bit of Living Language. By the way, I, I bought the, uh, the app for Living Language, which I have on my iPad, which is much better than the book. It's essentially the same content, but you have text to speech. It's easier to navigate, it's far superior and less expensive than the book. Had I known, I wouldn't have bought the book. But that's another issue. So I've already had some exposure to Greek, so I, I just found that this, this was just so slow in the beginner area and, and there's a bunch of stuff that's locked. So you, they force you and I don't like this. I, I like freedom. If I buy a book, I don't like the idea that uh, you know, uh, only the first five pages are visible to me and until I have tested on those five pages, all the remaining pages are locked. I like to flip through and come back. So I didn't like that, all right? Um, so then I said, well, I'll test myself to maybe find a level for myself. So I go in to start taking their text, test, um, and the, the uh, of course I'm gonna get most of them wrong. But uh, I think the idea of, of testing is that somehow you're going to learn these basics and when you have mastered these basics, then you move forward. That's a principle that I'm very much opposed to. I believe in language learning, we learn and forget the basics and then we move on to some other stuff that's interesting and challenging and then we go back to the basics again. It's not like we're building these solid, uh, you know, putting bricks in place to a wall that we're building, it's constantly sort of in flux. So I didn't appreciate that. And a lot of the testing, even the testing, was a lot of letters like alpha, omicron, uh, you know, and so then what you're being tested on is either these letters or um, the first word that they test you on to determine your level is the flower. Well, I don't think flower is to me, all that important a word when I start into a language. And now, and the other thing too is they ask you to type in Greek and I had been resisting typing in Greek. So one of the benefits of getting into Duolingo is that I have to type in Greek. So I went and found a Greek um, keyboard for my Mac and I started typing in Greek. And as with so many things in language learning that we think, uh, you know, it, it, it could be a big obstacle. In fact, typing in Greek is very easy. It's largely phonetic as I would type in English and there's a few other letters that I have to look for on the keyboard viewer in my Mac. So that was a good thing. So, and then, uh, but some of the questions, even in this testing, you know, they, they test you for, you know, what is this letter? And z z Z, or however they say it, Zeta in Greek. Zeta they spell Z-E-E-T-A. So I thought this was some other word, Zeta or something because Zeta, I would have written Z-I-T-A. No big deal, but it's just uh, very much, I don't know. Then the next word they test you on or phrase is the flower and the megaphone. So the first word is the flower. The second word is the flower and the megaphone. And then the word bad shows up three times. Like I don't know what sort of frequency they're using or why they select these words, 
Then came the word for pineapple, ananas. Ananas, pineapple. Then they had phee written P-H-E-E -E, and I had to write that in Greek. I had to figure out that it was actually phee, whatever. A, alpha. So a lot of letters and stuff, but a lot of the voc genuine vocabulary, of course, uh, I was getting wrong. So I failed. So that's fine. That's some messaging about run out of hearts or something. So then I went back and I saw that there was another, I didn't want to go back to beginner, but there was a place where I could do a test again. And here I could choose, uh, I think, it wasn't clear to me, but they had various groups, phrases, food, animals, clothing, POS, which I presume is possessive, questions, verb, verbs, color. Well, again, as a beginner in a, in a learning a language, food, animals, clothing, colors. I have zero interest in any of those, other than to the extent that they appear in some meaningful context. Uh, so that's a test out of seven skills. So I go in there, I'm gonna test myself again. The first word that shows up that I have to write in, I think I had to translate from uh, Greek into English was the hamburger. The second one was, and I had to write this in no, sorry, I had to go from English to Greek. The hamburger, this is followed by, the pizza does not have lemon. Uh, the third one was, it is his dog. Well, of course I failed them all. So go back to home, out of hearts, and I start up again. Another interesting thing is, I, I would get, like some of the letters, I would get them wrong, because I, I, eventually I just wanted to get through the thing. So I would type anything, they had something there, I just hit a Greek letter. And very often on something that was obviously wrong, I would be given correct or almost correct. So, I mean, that I'm just telling you what my experience was with Duolingo. I, I can't, I, I wanna get to something interesting, meaningful. Uh, I was frustrated, like normally, if I hadn't decided that I was going to um, try to write a review of Duolingo, and I, I, got, I hadn't got far enough into it to really write a review, but I'm out of there because I want to see some, some context, some, I want to have more freedom. I don't want to be tested at every step of the way. So that has been my somewhat frustrating initial exposure to Duolingo. Probably I should stick with it longer, but I'm not that motivated to do so other than for the purpose of, um, of writing a review. So if some of you can give me some advice that would encourage me to go further, I'll go further into Duolingo, uh, maybe enjoy it more, uh, maybe write a more meaningful review, but that's really all I have to say on Duolingo at this point. Bye for now. Hi uh, there, just an afterthought, okay? Uh, later, this is now the evening, I did the uh, video this morning and I've been thinking during the day we went shopping for food and that and I've been thinking about what I said about Duolingo and there were a number of thoughts running about in my head that I thought I would share with you sort of at the end of this video. There are lots of different kinds of people. Um, you know, there's much talk about, uh, you know, we need to be more uh, entrepreneurial that, uh, you know, the Republicans, for example, in the US are saying if we lower taxes then the actual entrepreneurial spirit will come forward and stuff. Not everybody is an entrepreneur. Not everyone is a, a motivated, independent language learner. So uh, not everyone approaches language learning the way I do. Uh, very possibly, probably, because Duolingo is very popular. Uh, of course, it's free, which is a big advantage to some people, although to me, um, you know, I, my time is more valuable than my money. Uh, but for many people, the fact that, that it's free is a major uh, incentive, but it's, it's beyond that. It's, I think many people like to get that regular pat on the back. Uh, they like to be prodded, uh, you know, and uh, so is this uh, an orange or is it a, an apple? And they say orange and that's good. And they move forward. And, and even, you know, this issue, like I personally don't like to get a whole list of colors or list of parts of the body or um, types of clothing to try to learn because my experience tells me that it's very difficult to learn these things. 
Um, I can learn one color or one object of clothing in a particular story or context and if I see it again and again and again, eventually it'll stick. If I try to learn, you know, 10 different items of clothing or 10 parts of the body, I just find it extremely difficult to do. Uh, but I can see where for some people uh, being tested on their ability to remember from a list of 10, uh, you know, whatever it might be, uh, items of clothing or other things that they have learned and then they get tested on it right away, that that could be very uh, motivating and therefore keep them on task. And in language learning, of course, the most important thing is to keep people on task. So to the extent that Duolingo is able to keep people motivated to stay with learning the language, then it is a good system. So I just wanted to make the point that, you know, first of all, people ask me here on YouTube, you know, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? What do you think of ASIMIL? What do you think of Duolingo? What do you think of something else? So I thought I would have a look at Duolingo. Plus I was starting into Greek. So for example, I bought Living Language and I thought if Duolingo can help me, I certainly want to use Duolingo for Greek. So, and then I thought I'll look into it, see if it helps me and then I'll do a review. So that's why I got into this uh, business of doing a review, but I don't want to imply that it's not good for anybody. It's, it's probably good for a, a large number of people, but personally, I think it's more valuable to, you know, I get back to Stephen Krashen and compelling content. And what I see is missing in Duolingo is compelling content, interesting content. So that very soon uh, I'm motivated to learn about Greece through Greek. Right now I'm still doing relatively simple stories, but it's still a story. It's a context and I'm, I'm working my way through reading, uh, you know, and looking things up and hearing text to speech word and then phrase and then sentence. And, and yet when I listen, I don't understand it. And I'm, but I know from experience that in a month or two, I will understand. And so I'm dealing with meaningful context and I don't see that in Duolingo. Therefore, for me as a learner, Duolingo probably won't work. But for many other people, this might be the first chance that they have a sense of success and achievement and motivation in learning a language. So to that extent, um, you know, it, it, it may not be for me. I'm going to try it again, but it may be perfectly valid for a lot of people. So I just thought I'd add that in so I didn't come across too negative on Duolingo. So thank you for listening. Let me have your views.